Hey everyone, thanks for uh, checking back in here. Uh, my name is Eric Connor, and I am a primary therapist at Inside Out Living. In, we're a counseling center and we're in downtown Chicago and in Evanston, Illinois. And I'm Steve Lackey. I'm co-founder and partner at Inside Out Living. Great. So, in our last video, Steve, we talked about uh, sex addiction, um, a kind of a tumultuous topic, but people always ask, is sex addiction real? And we tried to answer that in the previous video. And we firmly believe, as do many others that are, have been really following the research, that sex addiction is very much a very real addiction yeah. that follows very much some of the same cycles as other addictions. Sure. Um, so if you haven't had a chance, you can go back and watch that video. But today, we want to talk about the actual addiction cycle. Um, we're going to talk about it from, in, from a, a sexual addiction type of framework, but this is the same type of cycle that many other addicts go through. So. Um, there's four stages to it, and so we're going to just step through these and to the best that we can explain kind of what each one is sure. like. Sure. And the first stage, Eric, is preoccupation. And that is the inordinate amount of time that one spends either preparing or getting ready for or responding to whatever is going on viscerally in the body around this acting out. And so preoccupation is the obsession and the long period of time that one spends preparing to act out. Okay. So so just for other people, because they might be more familiar with, say, alcoholism, mm -hmm. but if somebody's at work and it's noon and they're thinking about having a drink at 5 or they're thinking about um, maybe checking out pornography sites at 5, that's preoccupation. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And what it also entails is, is setting up a foundation to be able to act. Out. So the preoccupation includes quite a few behaviors, and again, down a few videos from now, we'll talk in more detail about what that is. Okay. So let's say the preoccupation is going on, and, and 5 o'clock comes, and now this person has freedom, and they're going to kind of start to move closer to the, you know, actually the acting out. So the second stage after preoccupation is called ritualization. Um, the key word there being ritual. Mm -hmm. And so what they found is that as, as people move closer to um, their acting on their addiction, there's a ritual a lot of times they'll, they'll kind of sure. go through. So maybe it's the, um, it's the type of credit card that they tend to use for their uh, video sites. Maybe there's a certain seat they like to, like to put in. They like to have the computer monitors in a certain right, way. Right. Maybe there's other substances that they use. But the point is there's typically a ritual that, that almost prepares the body to move closer to the final culmination of the acting out. And, um, and we know too, just from research, that it's a way too of your brain kind of separating you out a little bit from consciousness and the ability to turn back. Sure. So as you start to get into this ritualization stage, it's going to get much, much harder. The brain chemicals are starting to really flow Absolutely. at this point, and Absolutely. it's going to get much harder to, to turn back, which leads us into the third stage. Exactly, and that third stage is acting now. That's actually the going forward with the act, whether that's going online or chat room or porn site, chronic masturbation or viewing your private porn collection or going to a massage parlor and visiting a prostitute. So it's the actual acting out. Once you've established the preoccupation phase and then the ritualization phase, the next phase is to follow through with those things. Absolutely. And that, you know, the, the acting out that's what we all hear about in the news, but or that, and that's what we tend to focus on. But but it's so important for people to know there's could be hours of sure. preparation sure. leading up to that, even if it's all inside the head. Sure. So unfortunately, and this is why addictions are such a problem in, in our society. Um, after the third stage, we get to the fourth stage, and that's um, the feelings of shame and despair. Sure. Uh, most, if you listen to testimonies of any addicts, they don't want to do what they do, and so when they do, there's a tremendous feeling of shame or there's something wrong with me. Sure. And that, so there's a cycle here, and this is what's so destructive about addictions, is that as people act out, it increases this feeling of there's something wrong with me, I, I'm feeling shame, I'm feeling guilt, I'm feeling that I'm not in control. And what's insidious is that that makes them feel bad about themselves, which could actually then precipitate another most, round of acting most out. Most definitely. And Eric, I'd like to liken it to a sugar pie. You know, you anticipate that piece of chocolate cake, that ice cream, or that, that Starbucks, whatever it is, and you put your sugar in it. Well, that first few sips, 
you feel the, the, the rush and the satisfaction of, of having ingested that. And then after a while comes the crash, the sugar crash we call it. Well similarly in this process, the addictive cycle, after preoccupation, after ritualization and the actual acting out, the guilt and shame literally is the crash. Hmm. It's that feeling of despair where you feel a sense of worthlessness, insecurity, and a lot of fear, and a lot of uh, deprivation around why am I out of control with this behavior? What is it? And not really knowing and not being cognizant of this cycle that you're in. And so that's why I felt it was very important that we share today what that cycle looks like. Absolutely. So that's the addiction cycle. Um, feel free to, to go to our website if you're not already there and look at some of our other resources. And uh, we'll be back next time. And I think we're going to talk about the iceberg yes. the next time, which yes. is, which is a, a fascinating topic. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Goodbye.